It wasn't too long ago that most airports weren't served by instrument approaches that would line you up with a landing runway. You might have had a VOR approach that ends in circling only minimums, but now many smaller fields have RNAV approaches lined up with the runway that get you down pretty low. This can give pilots the feeling that flying IFR into smaller fields can be a one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter routine. Actual flights into these fields will prove that no two are alike. That's the case at Brandywine Regional outside of Philadelphia. This is the home of Brandywine Aviation, a flight school and flight insight training partner. Training at a field like Brandywine will force you to appreciate the details on any instrument approach. As someone who did their training at a similar small field, I can tell you that it gives a healthy respect for briefing odd items on an approach plate you might not see doing ILS approaches into 6,000 foot runways. Let's dive into the RNAV Yankee into runway 9. This is a non-precision approach. It terminates in an MDA using LNAV minimums of 880 feet. It might not seem that way flying with modern avionics though, as we can use an advisory glide path to follow a descent angle down to the runway just as if we were on a precision approach. We should know that the advisory glide path doesn't give us protection below MDA, but let's look at the plate to get a bit more of the picture and what we can expect on the visual segment of the approach. The advisory glide path is based on the vertical descent angle, which is the constant descent slope of 3 degrees from the final approach fix, in this case 2100 MSL, down to the threshold crossing height of 40 feet above the runway. Now, there's a note in the profile view that says the VGSI and descent angles aren't coincident. Then it gives us the VGSI angle. In other words, the angle that the PAPI lights are guiding us down at. VGSI is just another acronym explaining the PAPI lights. It means visual glide slope indicator. It's a 4.2 degree angle, much steeper than the three degrees of the advisory glide path. And it takes us to a shorter threshold crossing height of 23 feet. The PAPI lights are situated here, very close to the runway threshold. Most of the time, the PAPIs are further down the runway. They're typically 1,000 feet down on larger runways, but this runway only has 3,200 feet of available landing distance. But more importantly, the descent angle is a very steep 4.2 degrees. If we break out at minimums following the glide path, we'll be significantly below the PAPI lights. Expect to see two reds. Why the difference? Let's look at the 3D view of the airport on final to runway 9. We could see some terrain and obstructions to the left of the center line. Here's the picture when the PAPI is red and white, giving us good clearance. What this means is that we might expect to arrest our continuous descent angle at MDA, enough to level off and get closer to the runway where the PAPIs go red and white, and then resume at a steeper angle. Of course, we can continue on our continuous descent angle. The FAA wouldn't publish it if it was going to bring us into terrain, but the visual segment is not clear of obstacles. We'll need to be ready to visually avoid them, and the best way to do so is to acquire and fly the Pappy Glide Path as soon as we pick it up. Getting into the details is what training with schools like Brandywine is all about, which is why they're a Flight Insight training partner. Their students take advantage of Flight Insight ground school subscriptions to supplement the training they do both on the ground and in the air, and their instructors are able to track their progress in real time using our instructor portal. Check out their school at the link here and in the description, and we love highlighting our training partners here on social media. If your flight school or university wants to partner with Flight Insight for training, we'd love to feature you here too. Reach out via our website or email today.